And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. We're happy to spend this half hour with you praying and talking the gospel as we pray for your prayer intentions. Don't know if WQPH is back up yet by the time you're hearing this. Hopefully it is. We had a bit of a problem with a pot during that last big storm. And we had to put in a new pot and the new pot didn't work. Or the reserve pot we had in just in case didn't work. So... Had to send for a new pot, and you know how parts are these days on anything to get. So hopefully you're hearing this on the radio. If not, hopefully you're listening to it on a live stream. And hopefully if you didn't catch the live stream when it was on and missed it while the radio station was down, you're listening to it as a podcast and we're getting all caught up. Well, today we're going to talk about this week's gospel. And... This week's gospel, along with last week's gospel, kind of scratch an itch on me, so to speak. It's something that gives me a little bit of, of hackles. And it's not that the gospel gives me hackles, it's because of what's done to it that gives me hackles. And I'm going to jump right into it because, like I said, this is something that gives me hackles. So this week's gospel is from Matthew. And it starts in chapter 13 with verse 44 and runs to verse 52. And it goes like this. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which person finds and hides again, and out of joy, and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it's full, they haul it ashore and sit down and put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw it away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, Yes. And he replied, Then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings forth from his storeroom both the old and the new. And that's the gospel for this week. Now, it's not a very long gospel. Now, last week, we had a very long gospel. But there's an optional gospel in this week's gospel. And there was one in last week's gospel, too. And I'm going to jump back to last week's gospel so that you can notice this. Now, last week's gospel, the optional part, the short version, is Jesus giving the sermon. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field, and while everyone's asleep, the enemy came. And it ends with, first collect the weeds and tie them for bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. And the optional part for last week's gospel is Jesus telling the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the yeast, and then explaining to his disciples who ask him, you know, explain the parable of the sower and the weeds. And he explicitly explains that the Son of Man will send his angels and collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers and be thrown into the fiery furnace. That part is optional. And what jumps out at you both in this week's gospel and last week's gospel is that the optional part is Jesus explicitly talking about the evil going to hell, or those who cause others to sin. And evil, notice, not just those who cause, just evildoers, but those who cause others to sin. Now, you might say, well, this is July, it's very hot, if your church doesn't have AC, that gospel from last week, I mean, that was a long gospel, that's Matthew 13 from verse 24 all the way to verse 43. I mean, that's, you know, 20 verses. That's a very long gospel. Maybe you want to just shorten it 
so that people don't have to sweat it out. And yeah, you can make that argument. But this week's gospel, the short form is three verses. The kingdom of heaven, it talks about the treasure in the field and the pearl of great price. That's three verses. And the optional part about the net thrown into the sea and the disciples, only six verses more, not very long verses either. So in both cases, both last week's gospel and this week's gospel, where Jesus explicitly talks about people going to hell, people burning. And notice he doesn't talk about faith here. He doesn't talk about faith causing this not to happen. He explicitly says the wicked from the righteous. Now, in Hebrews and other parts, they talk about uh, faith being credited as righteousness. But you also have James talking about faith without works is dead. So, this is a very, very important gospel. And again, think about what he's... Let's talk a little bit about what Jesus is saying here. And let's talk about the whole thing. The kingdom of heaven, a treasure buried in the field, and a merchant searching for fine pearls. When people find salvation, when people are relieved from the and given aid from the horrors that the world gives, which is what salvation does. Salvation relieves you from the horrors of the world and doesn't relieve you from the horrors and the fact that the world will not still have horrors. The horrors of the world still exist, but it gives you what you need to cope with it. And I've always been of the opinion, and I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again because I don't know if if you missed last week because of the uh, radio station being down, that the difference between the really strong in faith and the moderately strong or the weaker in faith is that the weaker in faith take the gift of heaven to be able to cope with things or to deal with small things and use it to and are able to deal with ordinary life they avoid some of the hardships of the world which belongs to the devil but the advanced in faith will suffer hardships and sacrifices for the faith they'll say to god i i'll take this give me more i will suffer for the salvation of others. And I'm I'm not at that point. (laughs) I don't even pretend. I'm not going to pretend that I'm at that point. That might make me a Catholic not as worthy to listen to in in terms of versus some others. But it's realistic. I admit it. But when I see people of faith who take on these additional burdens, those are the ones who are advanced in the faith, who have gone farther and farther and grown like the mustard seed in the gospel and so forth, where it becomes a tree and so forth. But when you dodge these things, when you dodge these teachings, you are taking away from what Christ is teaching people. You're giving people an incomplete gospel. You're giving people an incomplete message. If you teach someone to drive... But don't explain that oil has to go into the tank so when the engine doesn't seize up that you have to change your oil. You're going to drive okay for a while, but eventually your motor's going to blow. If you're not taught that because oil is a vital component. If you're taught that you need engine coolant and you're driving a car, eventually your engine's going to overheat. And your car's not going to move. All these things are there for a reason. And it's a very it's worth saying that there are plenty of priests across the country who do not want to confront their congregation with anything that's unpleasant. Because people don't like to hear unpleasant things. People want to be comfortable. Oh, I don't want to be. I want to be comfortable. I want to keep things as they are. But the job of a priest is is to do two things. It's to grow faith where it is and to clutch people away from hell. 
the primary job of a priest in giving the sacraments and in giving the mass and in anointing the sick and all of these things is to keep people out of hell, get people to heaven. That's their job. All of the things that are done, all of the good works, all the sacraments, all of these things are done for the explicit purpose of saving souls. And I, as I've said many times here, that is what WQPH is here for. We are not here to get rich. Nobody's getting rich off of this radio station. But we are here to try and help people's souls. And when you leave out a part of Jesus' teaching, especially a part warning you of the dangers of evil, you ain't doing your job. And it's like the readings from uh, the readings from Ezekiel about being the watchman. And it's very, very important. It's it's very, very, very important to do these things. And I want to touch on the first reading, since we're talking about this week's readings, which is from uh the first book of Kings, chapter 3, verses 5, and then 7 to 12. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I have served you in the midst of the people who you have chosen, a people so vast it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge the people to distinguish right from wrong, for who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request, so God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understandings that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there will never be anyone like you up to now, and after you there will be no one to come equal to you. So that reading, Solomon asks not for himself, again, not something to serve himself, but to serve the people. And because he does that, God gives him that great gift. And they leave out verse 6, which is not really big relevant. It's Solomon talks about, you've shown favor to my father David because he behaved faithfully towards you with justice and an upright heart. And you can continue the great favor even today, setting a son on his throne. That, that verse is left out, which is interesting because it talks about, again, David's actions, behaving faithfully. Now, what I think is really interesting, though, is where, remember how I said, it's what you leave out. The reading stops at verse 12. And it ends with him saying, after, the, you know, again, no, there'll be no one like you, and then afterwards no one will come equal to you. But verse 13 and 14 are left out. And verse 13 and 14 say, In addition, I give you what you have not asked for, such riches and glory that among kings there is not your like. And if you follow me, keeping my statutes and commandments as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Now that's significant because, again, Solomon is wise, 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 wise. You don't get any wiser than Solomon. But what does Solomon do in the end? In the end, after building the temple and meeting the Queen of Sheba and all these things, in chapter 11 of the Book of Kings, it talks about how Solomon loved many foreign women. He married the daughter of Pharaoh. He, married, he, he had 700 wives of princely rank and 300 concubines. That's a lot of mother-in-laws, by the way. And his wives turned his heart. This is verse 4 of that. 
When Solomon was old, his wives had turned his heart to strange God, and his heart was not entirely with the Lord. And he literally sacrificed to other gods and built things and burnt incense to other gods. And now remember, God had appeared to him twice. And God ends up appearing to him again saying, since this is what you want, you've not kept my covenant, my statutes, which I enjoyed on you, I will deprive you of the kingdom and give it to your servant. I will not do this during your lifetime, However, for the sake of your father, David, it is your son who I will deprive. Nor will I take the whole kingdom. I will leave your son one tribe for the sake of my servant, David, and of Jerusalem, which I have children. And things start going bad for Solomon, and eventually the kingdom is divided. And that's where you get the Samaritans from, because you have the, the other tribes of Israel and so forth. So, again, the consequences part is left out and there are consequences if you when you don't take care of God when you don't obey God and you never want to forget that short short thing along if you're at a parish where this stuff is being left out make sure you're listening to the EWTN make sure you're listening to people who are going to tell you these things because remember, a priest, it doesn't matter if a priest is good, bad, or mediocre. The sacraments are still the sacraments. The Mass is still the Mass. That's basic Catholic doctrine. But if you're not getting the whole story, find good Catholic sources that will give you the rest of the story. Or find a parish that will. Well, now let's get to our prayers. We have lots of things to pray for this week. We have a lady who's starting a new job. A man who's been named Andy, who's been very sick with septus and he has a wife who's sick so he you know we hope for him to recover we have a woman getting married and another nearing childbirth or a prayer there we have our standard prayer requests for mary for nancy for eric for the donors to wqph and for all the local pastors who preach the gospel here in our listening zone. We also have a prayer for Lisa, who is having some issues with cancer, and a prayer request for Art and his wife, who are retiring from their business. May, they, may God bless them after all their years. And a prayer request for, for some other people who are sick that we're not going to be naming. Remember, anonymous prayer requests are very much welcome here. And because we've gone a little bit long, we're going to do something short. We're going to do a Divine Mercy Chaplet. And we're going to do it in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended unto hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, we offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atoned for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of a sorrowful passion of mercy in us and the whole world. 
For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and atone for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, son and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and toned for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us and the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and toned for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. For the sake of self passion and mercy in us in the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us and in the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us in the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal one, have mercy on us in the whole world. And now we're going to say these prayers for those doing the indulgence calendar, for the intentions of the Holy Father, and also for the two Marianne's who I should have mentioned in the first batch of prayers. Glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning and is now and ever shall be, a world with out end, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. And we pray this as we pray all in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Because we have very little time left, since I went along with all of that, we will now do our closing prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this station, upon this show, upon all the stations that carry this show and all of our other shows, and all those who are listening to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds, so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son, Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to throw one final thought in here quickly. Remember that last past line from the Gospel. Every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings forth from his storeroom both the old and the new. Remember, nothing that I've said cancels out the mercy of God. The mercy of God is still there for those who request it. You're going to have a lot easier time, though, if you're in the mood to request it. Keep that in mind. Take care and God bless. Please join us in praying the Memorari for all our intentions. We are at a Legion of Mary meeting now, Our Lady of the Holy Eucharist Presidium. We hope that you have the Legion of Mary in your parish. Please join us in praying. Remember, Remember O most, most gracious, gracious Virgin, Virgin Mary, Mary that, that never was, was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, sought your intercession, was left unaided, Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you we come, before thee we stand, simple and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Thank you for listening to WQPH. Please pray for us. 
on the WQPH 89.3 FM community calendar, St. Bernard's Parish at St. Camillus Church in Mechanic Street in Fitchburg is looking for doors for their days of adoration. Adoration is currently Monday after the 8.30 a.m. daily Mass till 7 p.m. and Tuesdays after the 8.30 Mass till 4 p.m. They're also looking for adorers on Sundays that'll be running from after the 8 a.m. Mass till after the 6 p.m. Mass on Sundays. If you have an interest in doing adoration on either of those days or in the, the Sunday adorations, email us at wqph893 at comcast.net. That's wqph893 at comcast.net. Subject line, adoration. This has been the WQPH 89.3 FM Community Calendar. You are listening to WQPH 89.3 FM Shirley Fitchburg. And now a word from author Peter and Jimmy, who is the host of Your Prayer Intentions, taking place every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Whether you're donating money or giving us prayers, without you, we don't go on. And if you do want to help us go on, please consider going to wqphradio.org. There's a donate button there. You can give once, you can give monthly, and it makes a difference. It keeps all of our shows, and we have a great lineup of shows, keeps us going. And whether you're a fan of uh, your prayer intentions, whether you like Steve's show, Benedict's Hammer Sundays at Midnight, whether you like Brother Matthew and Brother Anthony from From the Housetops, which is on Sundays, 10.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Whether you're a fan of the Children's Rosary, which we have every day at 5 p.m., seven days a week. Whether you like our local matter show, which is Saturday at 11, or Talk Catholic, which comes right after us at 12.30. Larry's Music Off, Sunday at 11 a.m. We have the Shepherd's Pie Saturdays at 1 p.m. Or Dan and Tom with the 13th Apostle, which comes just before us at 11.30. Any of those shows and all the stuff you, you donate, you help these things come out. But what's also at the WQPH website, in addition to podcasts of our shows, is the prayer wall. Right on the prayer wall, support WQPH and get WQPH 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on WQPHradio.org. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH. PH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. And we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. And as soon as I see it, I will pray for you. God bless you.